He has brought us into His banqueting hall And His banner over us is love He has brought us into His banqueting hall And His banner over us is love Love is kind His banner over us is love Good to see you dear people and welcome to Bible Banquet The biblical stories of singing armies and singing prisoners all attest to the fact that God responds in powerful ways when we praise Him. In today's lesson, we will discover that even in the most challenging circumstances, we can learn to live a life of praise. Join us, Samuel Ngoikubanfo, Theodore Dixon, and Constance Nwosu, as we study another interesting lesson. We'd like to begin with a word of prayer. We will invite Theodore to pray for us. We thank you, Father in heaven, for yet another time to study at your feet. We pray that you inspire us by the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. Give us understanding and bless us and our viewer today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Special greetings to you all dear viewers on all our platforms on our satellite tv hope channel africa on our youtube platform on our facebook platforms thank you so much for being there we love you so much we'd like to um, study another lesson today we're talking about a life of praise it seems like that's what we have to be doing mm -hmm. just living to praise god and uh it's not as easy as it sounds, I imagine. We want to find out how it's possible for us to learn to live like that, especially when we go through hard times. We'll begin by reading from Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 to 7. We'll also read Psalm 145, lines 1 to 7. I will begin by reading Philippians chapter 4, Verses 4 to 7, I am reading from the New King James Version. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 Psalm 145, lines 1 to 7, still from the New King James Version. I will extol you, my God, O King, and I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise your works to another, and shall declare your mighty acts. I will meditate on the glorious splendor of your majesty, and on your wondrous works. Men shall speak of the might of your awesome acts, and I will declare your greatness. They shall alter the memory of your great goodness, and shall sing of your righteousness. Amen. 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 Now reading these passages, what reasons does the Bible advance for praising God? It started with mentioning the fact that God is great, and because he's great, he deserves our praises. Mm. God is our creator. He owns us all. That is a great reason for praising him. And he says that his greatness is unsearchable. No human can comprehend it, no matter how we try. 
In fact, if I jump to Romans chapter 11, verse 33, Paul acknowledges the fact that the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God are unsearchable, and that his judgment and his ways are past finding out. That is a good reason to praise God, because no matter how you try, nobody can equal him in greatness, mm -hmm. in wisdom, in understanding. Um, he created us and the vast world that we have not even seen. Psalm, the psalm that uh, Theodore read, you know, mentioned many, many re reasons because of his glorious splendor, or as Amplified said, his glorious honor, his majesty, his wondrous works, his awesome acts, his righteousness, I was just saying, graciousness, compassion, our God is slow to anger. He is great in mercy. He is good to all. And I can go on and on and on. He is the glory of his kingdom because of his power over all the earth. God's dominion endures throughout all generations. God upholds all those who fall. He raises all who are bowed down. Everyone looks up to him for food. Nobody can eat today without God making that food available. God is all in all and all. He's too great for us to even begin to talk about. The only way to acknowledge that greatness is just to start praising Him. That's it. Wow. So many reasons yeah. there. Mm -hmm. Endless reasons. Mm. Any ones? Yeah. One or two? I think it's sufficient. You know, the fact that He, he is constant. Mm. I, I am... I'm always at peace knowing fully well that God doesn't change because his faithfulness is the reason why we can still trust him when we cannot trace him. So he's faithful. And then his benevolence. I, I am always at peace knowing fully well that God will provide because for me as a person, he has provided in some very exceptional ways mm. that I am reassured. And then the fact that he forgives. We praise him because of the fact that he always looks beyond our thoughts mm. to see our needs. Wow. He's, he's gracious. He is so far removed from us, yet he is so humble and close to stay in our hearts. We praise him for that. Mm. That sounds like a song. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, he is <laughs> our dimension, as close as the mention of his name. So, Several reasons. Several reasons. God, yeah. now, we're talking about praising God generally, but more specifically in times of difficulties, because that's where it, it becomes kind of hard. I mean, when everything is, is, is going on well, uh, we don't struggle with praising God. But when things get hard, when things get tough, then uh, it also seems to become a little more tougher to praise Him. So. Um, how can praise change our perception of circumstances, especially difficult ones? I think um, living a life of praise, even before circumstances come, mm -hmm. is fundamental. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, some time ago, I shared a story of um, a taxi driver who picked me from my house to the airport and he drove for about one hour and a few minutes and all through that time he was singing mm. he, his mouth never closed there wasn't a trouble but he was singing i think our praises will result from our relationship with god how we, we conceive him whom he is to us and when that happens it's easier to to continue to praise in the midst of difficulties but even even when we don't have when we have that foundation it's still not quite easy, like you have said, because, you know, when challenges come, especially, you know, very unpleasant challenges, we forget and we lose balance. But when we, if we have had a relationship with God and we know whom he is and what he can do, you know, we can, we can sing. Uh, one of the AY, one of the Adventist youth songs says, you can smile when you can't say a word. You know, you can sing a song. You can sing a song and God honors those songs. So praise can lighten our burdens because when we praise, praise God in our situations, 
it revealed the fact that we understand that God is with us in that situation. Mm -hmm. when, we, when we praise God, when we are in situations, negative situations, we recognize that He is able, He is powerful, that there is a power that is above our circumstances. And if there is one thing that helps solve our problems is recognizing God. Okay, and it helps us live above those circumstances. Constance will add more to it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when we praise God in difficult situations, it really helps us to take our minds off the situation. Mm -hmm. And I mean, how do we praise God? You're praising God either by singing or by even going to the portions of the Bible like Psalms of praises and all that. And one thing about them is that even the songs that are composed are composed based on what God has done in mm -hmm. the past. Mm -hmm. Or the Psalms of David, for instance, I'll just as he was talking, I was opening to Psalm 103, Psalm 104. When you read each of these Psalms, you will see God at work, what he has done before. If you read Psalms that are related to the children of Israel, their journey from Egypt mm -hmm. to whatever, I mean, their situation you can easily um, um, connect with. Connect with. And so when you're singing or reading these uh, praises in the Bible, immediately the fact that you begin to remember uh, or you're reminded of what God has done in the past, there is hardly your situation that these songs or these uh, uh, praises in the Bible cannot touch. Mm -hmm. and, it, and all of a sudden, by the time you realize it, you don't even know when your situations begin to melt away from your eyes mm -hmm. and you're focusing them on God and you're praising this Almighty Father who is able to do all the things. In fact, by the time you realize, if, when you do it, you don't even remember that you have a situation that brought you up to that. So praising God can change our perception, can turn our minds back to, 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 to up to God who is able. And um, when that happened, it diminishes our circumstances. circumstances it yeah. brings them to, to nothing, nothing. And then uh, we know that God is in control. Amen. Mm -hmm. Let's look at a few examples in the Bible and, and find out what happened, a few stories in the Bible, so that we can better, we can have a better grasp of um, what praising God, especially in difficult circumstances, means. We will read from Joshua chapter 6, verses 15, 16, and 20. I will take that. Theodore, you will read. At 16 verses 23 to 31 and uh, Constance <coughs> you end by reading 2nd Chronicles chapter 20 verses 18 to 22 um, stories we're going to go through that a little quickly Joshua 6 verses 15 16 and 20 but it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and marched around the city seven times in the same manner. On that day only they marched around the city seven times. And the seventh time it happened when the priests blew the trumpets that Joshua said to the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. Verse 20, so the people shouted when the priests blew the trumpets and it happened when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat. Then the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. Amen. Amen. As chapter 16 from verses 23 to 31. And when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. Having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's chains were loose. And the keeper of the prison, awaking from sleep and seeing the prison doors open, supposing the prisoners had fled, drew his sword and was about to kill himself. But Paul called with a loud voice, saying, 
do yourself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light, ran in and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Mm. So they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. Amen. 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 Second Chronicles chapter 20, verses 18 to 22. Reading from the New King James Version. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord, worshipping the Lord. Then the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and of the children of the Korahites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with voices loud and high. So they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord, and who should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army. And we are saying, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. Verse 22. Now when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. Amen. 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 Wow. Mm. Three interesting stories which we have read there. The words of Jericho, Paul and Silas in prison, then Jehoshaphat's army um, going into battle with singing. Um, what do these stories have in common and what's unique about them in relation to praise? They have singing in common. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, three people sang and they mm -hmm. praised God. You know, three, they were challenging circumstances, mm -hmm. you know, of um, the wars of Jericho, the prison, and then the battle. So there were circumstances, and I must say unpleasant circumstances, precarious, you know, situations that God's people had to face. Uh, in all three also, the people looked up to God. Mm -hmm. Because it's one thing to praise God. I just opened them, um, Exodus 32, if you read from verses 17 down to... Um, 19, the people were shouting. In fact, even Joshua thought that it was a shouting of war. Mm. They were shouting and they were praising God, in quote. But at the last count, they were worshipping idol. So it's one thing to mm. praise, but it's one another thing to praise in obedience. So all three were praising God in obedience. obedience. They were praising God depending on his miracle, depending on his intervention, they were anticipating breakthrough. Okay, so they, they praise God because not because it was fun, mm -hmm. because somebody can scream and shout all day and nothing happens. So praise in all three circumstances was an instrument of faith, or was triggered by faith in God in that circumstance. That's what I think. Maybe Constance mm. will. I, I like what you Jericho said because I'm mm. looking at uh, Joshua's situation in the the, um, the wall of Jericho. There was something interesting I found there. Joshua chapter 6, verse 10. He told the people to shout, For the Lord has given you the city. The city, the wall had not fallen. Yes. That caught my attention. Mm -hmm. The wall had not fallen. He said, Shout, for the Lord had given you the city. Because I was imagining what kind of shout was that because people shout today mm -hmm. they shout you run out you're afraid they shout you come out you get angry that they were disturbing you but what type of shout did god ask them to shout and i think that's how i saw that because i was actually looking to see if i can get a clue and say shout for the lord has given you the city this was before the, the, wars city, the walls went, went fell down. and it was a shout of um to to recognize god's ability, God's omnipotence, God's um, sustenance and the fact in, of faith that they believe that God will do what he said he mm -hmm. will do. Mm -hmm. A shout that 
that shows God's ability to perform miracle mm -hmm. of not hitting anything, doing anything, and the world just crumbled. Well, the shout of faith. As a shout of faith. Yeah. And, and, and in Paul and Silas' situation, which the other read, something happened. They were singing and shouting, and they said that all their chains fell off. But they didn't move. In what fact, that? before you get there, they were singing, and all the prisoners were listening, which means they were singing in a way that kept people awake. That's, that's where I was. And going, they were not yes. disturbed. They were paying attention. You know, Go ahead. And they enjoyed this song, and God performed miracles. Not a single prisoner, prisoner was lost. Lost. Not or one ran got up and ran, ran away and said, This is my time. You know, Recently, or a few months ago, we heard about jail breaks in mm, our country. Mm, mm. Mm? And by the time you realize it, all the prisoners were gone. <laughs> but this one, the, 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 the gates were open, the chains, chains were, were off, and they were still there. The That's praise held the them pr spelled Yes. Out. And the power of God mm. overtook them. The Holy Spirit took absolute control. None of them felt like living. Well, yeah. And when the jailer wanted to hurt himself, Paul said, don't do that. We are all here. Don't worry. And that praise also brought the jailer and his family to God. to God to give their lives that's to a God. Uniqueness. You know, that's 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 the uniqueness there. And in the in the um, the last one, Jehoshaphat situation. You know, they started praising even before they gathered the choir. Mm -hmm. They started praising. When you are going to war, is it singing that you do? <laughs> <laughs> you know, or you arms. <laughs> yeah, or arms. You call your army, you begin to train them, you begin to show them how to use one ammunition or another. But they started singing even before they thought about the, the, the choir. And the choir marched in front. The soldiers came behind. That's a very poor battle strategy. Yes, <laughs> and it was not even... By human standards. Yes, yeah, by yeah. human standards. You don't go to Ukraine with yeah. that kind of stuff. <laughs> 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 you know, they are in front of the soldiers, we are behind them. Yeah. And one thing, it was not even that they were not prepared for mm -hmm. war. They prepared. They had everything, they were trained. Yeah. However, they gave God the opportunity to do it himself, himself. without... You know, Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, that the weapons of our warfare is not carnal. They are not carnal, mm. but they are mighty, mighty. to oh, destroy right. strongholds. Oh. You know? And so God helped me to learn to praise you even yeah. in situations, Amen. you know. It's, it's awesome. Amen. So so uh, le let me just add that um, you know, the praise of those at Jericho brought down the walls. It's mm -hmm. it's a unique situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the other one the army in Jehoshaphat's case, mm -hmm. the army was defeated. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, those of the walls of Jericho, they didn't have an army to fight. Mm. When the walls came down, the they instruction was go inside and, and, plunder. and plunder. But here in, in, in Paul and Silas' case, like Constance has said, it led to the salvation of an individual mm. and a family. And that man was so touched. When he woke up and asked for light, he saw that they were... He wanted to kill himself. Paul mm. said, we are here. He, he let down flat and wash before him, him mm. and, and asked the most important question what can I that do? anybody can ask in this race of eternal life. Mm. What shall I do to be saved? So he recognized something beyond. Yes, there was, he recognized there was so, a power. A there was power. something extraordinary mm -hmm. about the situation. And I just wish that our praises today will not just be for fun. They will be meaningful Or for self-gratification mm -hmm. or to show off. But our praises will attract people to Jesus Christ and bring them to their knees to ask those questions on how they can give their lives to him. Mm -hmm. But you know, the Bible recorded that the jailer and his family were saved. Yes. That's what we know. But all the prisoners were there. Yeah. They were all listening. So who knows what happened to them after, after that. After that. Yes. Hmm. Uh, we have talked about the response um, that God gave to all of these, mm -hmm. uh, all of these instances of praise, and we can conclude that in each of these stories, God responded in a very spectacular way. But does God always respond that way? That's the first question, and then, the, uh, the, as a follow-up question to that, um, why should we keep? on praising God no matter the response. What I mean is even if he doesn't respond in that spectacular way, why should we keep on praising him? You know, we have said here that God is omnipotent. We can't order him. He chooses to react to every situation the way he pleases him. Mm -hmm. So we can praise God from now to evening, even faithfully, and those 
outstanding miracles don't happen. Those extravagant changes don't happen. But it doesn't mean God is not working. Yeah. But he has chosen to work in yeah, a exactly. very unique yeah. way, differently. But whether the situations change or not, at least at the moment, we are to continue to praise God because, like we have said earlier, when we praise God, we recognize His power in our situations. When we praise God, our situations are minimized and God is glorified. When we praise God, it uh, as to our health. Hmm. Because when our eyes are removed from the challenges and we focus on God, we feel well, we feel better. So praise brings healing. Hmm. Music, good music, you know, brings healing. It's, it, really, it brings life. So let's continue to praise God. Because even Paul himself was in prison, was in chains, but he found reason to praise God. So no matter what chains or physical, emotional, financial chains that we have today, let's praise God. Because when we praise God, our chains are, are weakened mm. and God is glorified. Amen. Amen. And you know, God knows his plans for us, period. We don't see those plans because we are limited in mm -hmm understanding we are limited in knowledge and so why we think God is not answering he has he doesn't care because things are not going the way we want God is working out his purposes in a very special way for us so all we have to do is to continue to trust him mm -hmm. continue to praise him we need to cultivate this attitude of praising God and you know the three Hebrew boys they said we know that God is able to save, us. to save us. But even if he does not save us, we will still not bow. And I think when we don't praise, when we wallow in our situations and feel sorry for us, we are actually bowing. bowing, to that bowing because Satan is very happy. Mm. We are no longer praising God. We are praising Satan. And we need to remember that. Wow. Thank you so much, Constance and uh, Theodore. We'd like to pray at this moment and ask God to give us the spirit of praise in our lives. Constance, will you pray for us? Dear Lord and Father of mankind, the one whom praises inhabits his throne, we thank you that today you have reminded us of the importance of praising you, the importance of lifting our eyes up to you and not focusing on our circumstances. Help us, as we have discussed, and help our viewer out there to remember that you are greater than our challenges and that you're able to handle them for us. Help us to keep trusting you, even when it seems we cannot trust you. Teach us to praise you all the time, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for being a part of this wonderful lesson, dear viewer. We believe and we pray that from today henceforth, you will learn to live a life of praise. See you on our next edition. God bless you.